screen, so it means that you guys can see almost nothing here. Um, <laughs> and but I just want to get um, that um, that instruction bar um, away. But anyway, can everybody see what do, what do you see on the screen up in Gauteng? Hello. So we see the front page of the slides of chapter eight. Are you sure? Yes, it says topic five, chapter eight, customer motivation. I'm just being sarcastic. You, that's the right one. <laughs> okay, so. Right, you should be on customer. You should be on customer um, motivation. Um, it is actually a, a quite an interesting, uh, quite an interesting topic. Um, and as more people join, we can just admit I'm going to also just see show the conversation. Oh no, now that's going to completely. Now nobody can see anything here. Um, right. Um, I'm not going to go through learning outcomes. Learning outcomes um, is 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 um, straightforward. What we want to achieve in this chapter is quite simple. We want to know what motivates the customer. The module is customer service, um, customer, uh, consumer behavior, customer behavior. We, you, sorry, as future marketers want to know why customers, um, what motivates customers? What motivates customers to buy a certain product to support a specific brand, okay? This is not branding, I'm not, I'm not advertising, okay? I'm not sponsored by USN. Um, the secret for marketers is to find out what motivates a customer. And one of the most important things of starting points, obviously, for us would be to ask ourselves the question, if we look at some um, famous individuals, famous for various reasons, um, your power supply worked there, Warren? It's all good. Okay, because I had from some, no, it was in that class on that wall. But anyway, right, there are some famous people on the screen and some infamous people as well. Okay, um, the famous people, we've got Jeff Bezos, richest man in the world. What motivates somebody like that? How much more money do you want to make? Okay, and, and I think pretty much the same as, 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 um, as Steve Jobs or the late Steve Jobs on the right-hand side of the screen. They want to make a difference. They want to get up in the morning and say, you know what, I love so much what I do. And I think they go back on their journey and they look at where they started. Jeff Bezos had a very high paying job. And he resigned to start Amazon. He was selling books from his garage. That's how it started. Okay, so it doesn't... It, it, it keeps him humble, I think. It keeps him motivated because he's always been somebody that says, why did I, I always go back to that point where, why did I resign my job? I could have been comfortable for the rest of my life. Okay, now he's more than comfortable. But why take that risk? He took that risk because he wasn't, he wasn't excited every morning to get to work. He wasn't doing something that he was passionate about. Uh, I had to chat on, on the weekend, though, as, as a matter of fact, um, um, in our family um, over, over lunch on, on Sunday. Um, the conversation popped up as to, um, because I, I pointed out um, to them that I realized last week while I was doing some, some, some searching, um, Googling a few things, um, because I wanted to use an example for the marketing students, I realized that my second year roommate at Varsity, is the CEO of Capitec Bank. He's earning 72 million as a package. That's after he took a pay cut last year of 22 million. But you know what? I haven't spoken to him in, in more than 15 years. I'm not sure if he's happy. And then there are some people who have absolutely nothing, but they always have a smile on their face. I think it's the important thing, and I've also said to, um, to the students, I, I went from my first job interview. I was, I was married for a year. No, not even a year. I was lecturing at the Stellamus University. I was managing the gym there at, at Kutzenberg. Uh, I was coaching cricket at Marty's. I, I was quite content and very happy. Then I got opportunity to, uh, then it was still health and racket that later on became Virgin Active um, for a regional financial manager position. 
I went for the interview. I got the job and I got home to my wife in Stellenbosch. That was in Ronnebosch. And I said to her, she said, well, you, you don't look excited for somebody who got a job. It paid 10 times more than I was earning at that stage. You know what? You just married. You're getting not a pay increase. <laughs> you're getting 10 times what you were earning. And I said to her, you know what? I know I can do the job. I'll, I know I'm, I'm going to be good at the job as well. I just don't know if I'm motivated to get up every morning and do that job. And yeah, she said, well, by the way, the dean of the faculty wants to see you. Now, if the dean of the faculty wants to see you, um, it's not because he's doing a courtesy call. Usually something's wrong. So I was rather anxious when I walked to his office, uh, especially when he got up from behind his desk and he usually just like we're sitting, like I'm sitting here facing you guys. The door opens. He says, yeah, yeah, come in. He doesn't get up from his chair. He got up. He pulled my chair for me. He says, you know, tea or coffee? I thought, oh, now I'm really in trouble. And then he actually said to me, you know what? Doesn't this institution fund them? Would I be interested in, um, in doing the job? Because um, he's already committed me to the job. They wanted somebody to open a specific institution in Stalabash. And... Um, it's actually Professor Tim Notes who, who spoke to him because they were friends, and he said, yeah, you'll do it. And I said, well, I don't, what, what, what do I need to do? He said, well, there's his number, fund him, and yeah, 25 years later, um, it actually worked out quite well. So the fact is, I enjoyed it. I wasn't maybe earning as much as I would have if I took the original opportunity, but I really enjoyed every day that I worked. I think that's the important thing, and that's what often motivates people like a Jeff Bezos and um, a, 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 um, a Steve Jobs. As Steve Jobs then his quote says, being the richest man in the cemetery doesn't really matter to me. Going to bed at night saying we've done something wonderful. That's what matters. Okay. He also said that, I mean, if you think um, the crazy people who think they can change the world are actually the ones who are changing the world. Ronaldo, also a very popular figure. He's about, his net worth is about 500 million US dollars. Not to shabby for a football player. He's won everything. He's been the best footballer in the, in, in, in the world for how many years now? Um, he's won all those accolades. Um, he's won trophies with all the teams that he's played. There's, there's, um, yeah, he's been very successful. So what motivates him? What motivates him is that he wants to always be the best football player in the world. That's what motivates him. And then the reality to, to many, closer to where we, where we um, find ourselves, is that image right in the um, bottom center of the screen. That person is motivated by something completely different. He slept under a bridge last night. And we, we can't gather from that picture when last he had his last meal. He's motivated just to get something to eat, to survive, and maybe a place to sleep, we sleep tonight. We're all motivated by different things, people. And that's what makes this journey for a marketer so extremely difficult. Because if all of us are being motivated for different reasons and driven by different things, which we sometimes can't explain, we don't know why. As I said, um, um, we support certain brands. Often we don't know. Often it's because um we sort of by default inherited that from the way that um, it was done in our households um we don't know what we do know as marketers however is that everything starts with the need of the customer everything starts with the needs of the customer that's our starting point for any business activity that follows that's what drives the customer, and simultaneously, that's what makes our job as marketers not impossible, but, but quite tough, because we have to, have to, we have to try and find out what motivates, what motivates our customers. Are we ever going to find the, the right solution for that? More, more than likely not. Um, but there are a few things that we can do, and in this chapter, we'll be looking at a few um, um, methods that, that has been tried and some approaches that has, has been used in um, over years 
we're looking at Maguire, we're looking at Maslow and their different theories. Um, it's, um, it's again, it's, it's not foolproof, it's not a solution, it is a starting point. Right. Excuse me. After all the smoke um, in Cape Town yesterday, um, my throat's a bit dry. Not that I actually went out and stood in a fire, but I think it is um, because of the strength of the winds, it was it was all over. And one of my colleagues actually lives in Musenberg, which is um, for those who are in Bel um, on the Belvoir campus um, and from from this area. But no, no, that's quite a quite a distance from from UCT and from Cape Town City Centre, and they. That the cars and houses and gardens covered with, with the ash from the fire. So it's under control for those who are not um, up to what, um, what the news are doing. But I know that you guys are, um, as millennials, you, you thrive on information. Um, you want to stay on top of things. Uh, but it might not be a topic that's, that's relevant to you. Um, and that's the other thing that we have determined already this far in, in consumer behavior is that Regardless, and you did it in the test as well, um, the fact that the stimulation has happened, the fact that the exposure has been done, doesn't mean that you're going to actually remember everything. You're not going to necessarily pay attention to everything. You're going to pay attention to what's important to you at that point. And that links with what we cover in this chapter about motivation. If your circumstances demand, um, like that homeless person in, in the image on the previous slide, that um, is, is in desperate need of something just to stay alive. Um, you know what? Um, anything in the form of, um, of, of food and drink is going to satisfy his need. He's going to, and he's, he's highly motivated, he's motivated to do anything basically to ensure that, that's, um, that that actually happens. Um, uh, I quite enjoy often also when I do some some Google searches to um, to listen not just to motivational um, to motivational videos but also um, to listen to people who are successful and have really been um, who've, who've really been at some point in their lives um, didn't see didn't have enough hope um, of what the future entails. Um, successful people currently on on our TVs screens. Um, local South Africans who, um, who grew up in foster homes, who grew up um, having to um, having to beg for food, go through the bins at the back of, of supermarkets where they throw away all the leftovers um, just to get something to eat for the day, and now they're successful. And you never and they never forget that. And I think that that's when you're really at your worst and your low point in your life. When you've hit rock bottom, that, that's probably um, the greatest motivator that we'll ever find. Um, but um, although it's slightly off the topic, it still indicates to us why um, people are motivated um, and why people are motivated in different ways. Our motivation is basically the processes that we all go through um, to, um, to behave the way we do. Um, it all starts when the need is aroused. Anybody, who's had breakfast this morning? Okay, why don't the others have breakfast? Are you one of those, um, I've got my fix, it's in my, in my flask that I'm carrying with me. As long as the caffeine content is high, I'm okay. Well, I should be okay until at least till lunch, okay? Is that so true, huh? Yes. You know that coffee dehydrates you a great deal. That's why you always, when you, when you have your, your very strong espressos, they bring you a little small glass of water. Oh, yeah. Yep, it's to hydrate you again. Do you think it was just to cleanse your palate? Yeah. No. <laughs> well, why order an espresso in the first place? <laughs> no. I think that I'm not drinking espresso. This is the time that you I tell you what, life's too short to have good coffee and have fewer coffees, but really, I would go, I, I admit, in a couple of years, I mean, um, in January this year, I've, I've, I've stopped smoking more than 23 years ago. And um, strangely enough, after my two knee operations in January and February this year, 
I, for, for a very long time, up to recently, a couple of weeks ago, I couldn't stomach coffee. It's not because of the hospital coffee that they gave us, that plastic coffee that you think, oh, oh, looking forward to something, at least I can have something. I'm not on the drip. I can actually take some solids and fluids. And they give you this plastic coffee and you think, mm, no. It wasn't that. It wasn't that. It, the taste just, it was, and, and, and I, I had my taste, my sense of, of, of taste, but, um, and then gradually, and then I decided, you know what? I'm going to spoil myself every day now with one decent, very decent. I'm even prepared to go beyond the normal price prices to get proper coffee in my system. And it, I'll tell you what, it's worth it. Haven't it's worth it. Different. Haven't you eat different when you're in hospital for a week? Yeah, it does. It's so lovely. I truly love this. I think that loving the food where the mom had something to think about. Very true. Something to look forward to for a long weekend. You want to add something or share something? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, a good coffee goes a long way. Tell you what. Um, what's that ad? Those Nespresso ads where they've got George Clooney in and yeah. Jack Black. Uh huh. Yes. What else? No, nothing else. If, if proper, proper Nespresso goes a long way, I have to admit. Um, now, everything starts with a needle arousal. That's why I asked you that particular um, um, question. Because if you had um, breakfast this morning, you shouldn't be hungry by now. But then we all know that you are students and that you are constantly grazing. So, um, always looking for something to eat, always looking for something to drink. Um, and it's fine. You've got fast metabolism still, so it's all good. But even if you had breakfast an hour ago, and somebody, and you walk into this building, um, the campus building, but somebody somewhere is making breakfast. Let's say, for instance, and that's why I hated to go to the malls early in the morning because I, I usually um, had breakfast before I go, but then everything smells so nice. I mean, it smells like, you know what? I'm not really hungry, but my senses of smell specifically have been aroused. And that's where everything starts. And if you are motivated strongly enough, in that case, probably not because I've had breakfast, but uh, if I haven't had breakfast, that specific sense that is aroused now, that's going to motivate me to take action. Okay, that's what this whole process is. It's where your, um, where, where your desired state, where you want to be, feel satisfied after you've had a nice meal or a nice drink is different from what the actual state is. That is what is the motivation and that's what drives you. And that difference between your actual state and your desired state is what we call the drive state. That drives you to take action from that point where, oh, that smells quite nice. And all of a sudden you're hungry. You weren't hungry. All of a sudden you're hungry and you now are motivated to, to take action. Um, we have different needs. We have different needs. We have um, innate needs. That's needs that that we are born with. Need to feed ourselves, to be sheltered, to be comforted. These are all things that we um, we all want. We all want to feel important. We all want to feel that we belong somewhere. Okay. So that that's those are all innate needs. And then needs that um, uh, um, our, our um, acquired needs. Is, as we progress through our lives and experience different situations um, and what our current situation is, we determine how strong our motivation is. And then we learn through different experiences. We acquire new tastes and new needs. Um, and that is um, in the category of acquired needs. It's not something that you have to have. It's more something that you desire to have. Um, not always something that you have to, a need that you have to necessarily um, satisfy. Our innate needs, however, we do need to satisfy because that is directly linked to our survival. We'll see that when we we'll deal with Maslow and his hierarchy of needs later on in that chapter. Again, because you did it in marketing last year, right? Remember Maslow? Maslow, you probably did in grade 7 and grade 8 and grade 9 and grade 10 and 11 and um, yeah. 
And you know, some people still get it wrong. Okay, some people still get, only get the triangle right. Uh, the shape of the shape of the um, of the um, of Maslow's theory. Apparently, there are students that are struggling to access the class. Um, I have to admit, um, I'll check afterwards if it's if it's related to um, the internet um, quality, speed, and accessibility because. Um, I struggled myself this morning, um, and um, yeah, it took me three attempts to upload the slides that we have in front of us at the moment. Um, I'm going to um, I'm going to immediately after class. I don't have a second period, but after uh, this class, I will immediately go to our technical person um, and and mm -hmm. see if it isn't a generic problem, um, or maybe it's just one of those Tuesdays again that seem to always happen because um with all the other days i never have any problems it's always on a tuesday maybe they swap tuesdays and mondays around and today is blue um i don't know i, I don't have an answer to that uh, people um i know that the link is working because there are um students who have who are online um, um as a matter of fact there's quite a number of you that's online um there's quite a number of you guys that's online. So if the if the link drops, um, I would suggest for those um, uh, like Anipu, I think what what I suggest is that um, just try to attempt to access through the um, the same way that you access through the live session on on week nine. Um, that that's that would be my recommendation. Um, I went that route this morning as well. Just try that, please, if you don't mind, and then we'll see how we can progress from there. Okay, but thanks for to bringing uh, that to my attention. Um, that's always the nice. There's always that challenge. Um, it's a pleasure. Um, it's it's always a challenge. I think online lecturing we haven't figured it out yet. Um, we are not that advanced when it comes to. Um, South Africa is not that advanced when it comes to stable internet access. Um, and let's not even think about it loud, because um, if we do think about it loud, something might just happen. I'm not even going to go load sharing. Hey? Eh? Load sharing. Because I'm pretty sure Big Brother is listening. And every time I, I, I express something about load sharing, it, it, it's within the next 24 hours something happens. So I'm not going to try and rain on anybody's parade. Let's just keep quiet. Let's not remind them that there's a possibility like that that they can take. So, you know, it doesn't sound so stupid, but I'm too afraid to gossip because I feel like my friends listen. Wow. Yeah. It's become, it's come to a point where I'm actually like, probably really you concerned. Like, I'm quite scared. Like, I didn't say it out loud. Because <laughs> I'm afraid my friends are going to let that person know. <laughs> as long as you're not at that, I see dead people stay here. Yeah. And if they do know, <laughs> oh, interestingly, um, while while we while some are battling to get online, and also why um, um we we spoke about it in class now, on the on the way um on the way into work this morning, I was listening to the radio um and and then KFM. I always listen to KFM breakfast because that's I quite enjoyed it. Initially, I uh, it was when there's a change in presenter, um, it it was uh, I found it hard to identify with a new group and yes. they sort of grew on you and, and they actually you can see that they have become content as a group as well but interestingly enough this morning they did a test to find out if you are actually a good liar or not and how to find out if you're a good liar or not is to take your dominant hand if i'm if you write with your right hand take your right hand and draw a cue on your forehead a cue not a circle a cue okay and then the direction where that little um, uh, what's, that, what's that thingy in the queue? Yeah, line. Yes, that line in the queue at the bottom. If it goes to your left eye, you are a very good liar. If it goes to your right eye, you're actually not. You think you might be, but you're actually not. It's just one of those. I mean, there's so many tests. Uh, I, all, I know that negotiators and psychologists use this to also determine if somebody's lying. If um, a negotiator in a 
um, um, is questioning a, a suspect, then um, they have ways of where your eyes go after you've asked the question, you up, left up or right down, or whatever indicates if you're actually telling the truth or not. I know psychologists use that as well. It scares me. And now we're talking about that, Warren. I mean, if, if, if I know that there are people with that kind of ability um then you know what you try and avoid them because i mean <laughs> you what and you know what there's nothing wrong with sometimes um sometimes it's, it's necessary to tell a lie you know not necessary to tell lies it's never necessary to tell a lie but it's, it's it's not always wrong to to be lying some people lie for the purpose of entertainment they just want to elaborate on the story so they want a good laugh of course they want to be center of the attention and the more they can color in their story and add facts um they always say that the best lies are sprinkled with a lot of, um, it's a truth. <laughs> so, um, yes, Warren? So what I think is pretty cool and that I think might link in with like the behavior of a consumer mm -hmm. and something that you might not think about is yep. that, like, for example, I work in a restaurant and I spoke to my manager and I'm like, the fact that you can tell the personality of a consumer or oh, yes. like someone is coming to the restaurant based on where they sit in the restaurant. It is true. I actually did that um, with, with a group of, of students when I was lecturing at Stalamus University many years ago. Um, it was one of those bigger, you know, what the, the, your, your traditional universities, and they are referred to the oldest ones in the country, like Stalamus and, and Pretoria and Bloemfontein and, and UCT, for instance. Their classrooms, all, all them, a lot of their classrooms had that kind of a theater effect, like in the movies. Yeah. Okay. Especially if 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 it's a it's a 200 seat plus um, facility because then the guys at the back must still be able to see the lecturer at the front. If it was all on the same level, it'd be very difficult. And um, I one morning just to prove a point because after about two weeks, the students, every student, went and sit in the same seat. There were lots of open seats, yeah. but they have a maybe it's a special angle on the screen or whatever they want to be close to a, a power supply like you this case darren for your laptop or maybe um you, you you're not a morning person and you need a wall to lean against so you can maybe doze off occasionally or whatever and um whatever your motivation is so what i did is i took a, a very realistic plastic snake and i put it there there were two entrances there are two entrances at the front and there are two entrances at the back so i i, I basically um, I basically uh, locked two of the doors and in front of the ones that were um, open for X, uh, where you can um, in, 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 enter through, I put the plastic snake sort of safe distance, not to hurt you, but you're definitely aware of its presence. The students initially, okay, right, they were taken aback, right, what do we do? Okay, so the snake's not moving, so we're fine. And it's one of those things, and that's what they always say. I mean, if, if, if you, you know, I hate snakes. I mean, that's probably, yeah, my, yeah, well, I was bitten by one, so that probably added to my, to my love for them. Um, and um, the students found a way around the snake so they can still get to sit in the seats they always did. They didn't even change their seating patterns as a result of uh, something like, Yes, it's, it's, it's weird, and, and you're quite right. You can, you can after a while, especially uh, with your, and then Warren, we started the conversation because Warren um, said that um, he's discussing with his manager, you all know, especially your regulars, your regular customers will always go and sit in the same seats. And they will almost sort of, mm, if, you, if that seat's taken, you can almost determine how, much money they're going to spend, how hungry they are, and how big their need is, if they are prepared to take a lot of seat and not wait for their um, their preferred seat. Yeah. But um, I think also it's good it's good management, um, um, good customer management if you pay attention to that detail and ensure that you that you document those patterns. Yeah. Because if we know this person is usually a Wednesday or Thursday evening person, you try and tend um, to, to almost sort of keep customers away from that seat because that person especially and those are the nice things i mean I've, I've shared with you that my experience on emirates air and that's quite similar document this person with this family are they um four in the family it's primary school kids so it's probably going to be close to the play area 
um, and that's most likely going to be on the meals. Also, when you when you speak to them and you phone about the uh, about the specials, for instance, you're actually, um, yeah, we almost as if they weren't sure what they were going to order. Uh, you can convince them. You can persuade them to back and to spend more than they would. Yeah. You can pick up on, on 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 that. So it's very easy because you know what evenings they'll be there. You know how many they will be there. You know usually what they eat, um, and 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 build on that. The yeah. clever manager uh, ensures that the staff is informed of that yeah. because that helps you to manage that group. You're going to get a better tip, yes, to start with, but that customer is also going to spend more. Because he feels special, yeah. and that's 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 the main reason in hospitality industry why why um um that that motivates businesses to to offer that extra um, um quality service because they know um if that person feels comfortable if he, that feels, person feels special he's going to take care of you he's going to open his wallet for you and that's that's what we want um and that's what um it's it's not it's yes primarily it starts with the need satisfaction but it's more than that um because um the bottom line is still that it's it, it's 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 business and as it says on the bottom of the screen it all starts with the needs of the customer and identifying that need but you can't the need itself is not going to resolve the problem the customer must want to change his current state to where he wants to be. He's um, what we call his aroused state to his actual state. Okay, or desired state, sorry. Anybody, any questions? I'm assuming not. Right. There are a few things that's important that we have to remember. One, for instance, um, the need needs to have very specific and appropriate goals. I need to, but I also want to lose weight. Okay, so that's going to make to make, motivate me. It's not a uh, often when a doctor says, you know what, you have to, then we sort of want to. But it also means that we have to ensure that um, that it's that's that's achievable okay so in my case like when i stopped smoking um somebody asked me the other day i mean 23 years did you actually smoke i didn't know you smoked i said yeah i did and I actually smoked a lot um i actually don't think i actually smoked as much as, as people thought i did because um at that stage i was, I was working in the cricket and, and environment and um and um the the night cricket um which is the t20s nowadays was sponsored by benson and hedges um the cricket academy that i was working for as well was sponsored by um remgro uh, our british american tobacco sorry uh, they were always cigarettes I, I i got four cartons of cigarettes delivered every friday regardless of what my needs were that's what the reps did okay and you can imagine you go to a cricket you go to three day night cricket games in the week and the sponsors are there. The sponsors splash. I mean, I think I probably lit the smoke and then uh, probably took one drag and then never smoked that cigarette again. And then, oh, the cigarettes burned out. So I actually liked another one. So it almost, I, I think I probably effectively only smoke about five cigarettes a day. But regardless uh, of the fact is, is, why did I stop? I just didn't like it anymore. I always knew what I was smoking that is not good for my health. I actually spoke to some of the international athletes who, who usually visited Stellenbosch over December and January because it was pre-season for them and it was winter in the northern in the northern hemisphere and the weather in, in Stellenbosch is perfect around that time of the year so they could train a lot. I was surprised, initially shocked, how many Olympian athletes smoke. They know it's bad for their health, but why? So I asked. Some of them, and I said, you know what? It's a uh, we smoke because it's a uh, it's a suppressant. I said, if I smoke, I don't eat because they're looking so much after their weight. It has to be almost fighting weight all the time. I was surprised that that is an approach. Now, I'll find a different way. In my case, I'm just drinking more water. Uh, but anyway, uh, um, the, the fact of the matter is, whatever your need is, and then whatever um, motivates you to do it. Um, must be realistic and must be achievable. It must be acceptable as well. You can't, in an, in, an, in an attempt to satisfy your need, do something illegal 
uh, or that's something that is morally not acceptable. Okay. In other words, um, rather have your rather stand on a street corner with your placard and beg or pay to do anything and go out and steal. Okay, so to satisfy your need, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not mocking anybody. Um, I think, I mean, in 2014, um, there was a, there was a movie out called Shelter. I'm not sure if you, uh, if you saw that. It was, um, and I'm one of the, one of the um, images in the movie, I can still clearly remember, is where this lady was sitting down and she was actually saying, at some point in my life, I was someone. And I think we sometimes forget that when we, when you pass people like that. Bad decisions, a lot of things could happen. I mean, yeah, I, I know of people in the early days of um, the lotto in South Africa who actually won the lotto in excess of a couple of million who are now homeless because they made bad decisions. Okay, let's move on. Furthermore, a person's perception of his own self how you see yourself also influences and motivates you to take certain decisions. If you want to be, want, if you want to belong in a certain um, um, reference group or peer group, um, you very often make decisions to purchase clothes that uh, people and um, in that group wear. You want to sort of almost sort of wear the same brands as they do. Um, I saw the Yankees now. I see your cap. The, the New York Yankees got clapped last night. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Um, but let's not go there. I mean, um, I'm, 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 I shouldn't be the one dishing out any criticism because my football team is, yeah, let's not, or I almost use the word that um, would not have been acceptable on a line. Um, but anyway, um, how we see ourselves is, is very often um, um, also very important in, 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 in our decisions we take and what motivate us to make certain decisions. You want to actually improve your status in a particular group, and as a result of that, it motivates you to um, um, to buy certain products or to support certain brands. What are we doing for time? Because this morning is completely upside down. No, we're still good. Yeah. Right. What we do now, however, regardless of what motivates us to buy cars and certain clothing or whatever, our basic needs, the need for food, to satisfy our thirst and our hunger, that must be satisfied every day. It's also referred to as our um, physiological needs. If we later on look at um, Maslow's hierarchy, the bottom needs, the basic needs, the basic needs for survival. You're more than welcome to do that. Right. As I said, everything starts, every motivation starts, where the motivation is the process that makes you do what you do, that drives you to do what you have to do. Um, it all starts with a need arousal. I'm pretty sure if you look at that image at the bottom of the screen, if you look at it long enough, you can almost smell the, you can almost smell the bry. Um, and if... Hey? Oh, I can find you there. <laughs> 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 but, uh, be careful now. No, we, we're talking here. Uh, they, they, were, they were either insult or a compliment shared in class now um, on smells. Um, what, what are you saying? That's really Is it a good smell or a bad smell? <laughs> you are very careful now. Okay. Okay. Good comeback then. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, people, yes, there are various ways that uh, the need can be aroused. It, it often can happen, um, as I said, uh, through the environment. You're walking past and then, oh, this smells nice. And that sort of arouses your need that you didn't know you had. There's nothing that smells as nice as a coffee shop where the flavor of coffee is just in the air. Um, we all know that um, that is it's it's done. The layouts of your shopping malls um, are done in a particular are done the way it is for a particular reason because your food court is always sort of off, almost in the center of the facility. 
and as a result of that, the flavors that they share um, um, contribute to arising the needs of customers to spend something that they probably did not even anticipate they will do when they went to the mall that day. We also have um, physiological needs. Okay, yesterday afternoon at some point it was just like I got up from my chair and I thought, oh, hello, my blood sugar dropped. Okay, that can happen. Um, and, and that's usually indication, ho ho, we have to do something. Uh, it doesn't mean that you are sick or ill, it just means your blood sugar dropped. So you have to manage it. You have to eat. It. So um, um, uh, that could be a reason that arouses a need. Um, it could be emotion. Um, our emotions very often do that. Um, I think that, um, well, I don't know, I think that after, after that smell, um, there was no need arousal after that smell. Wasn't it one of those smells that, um, why do we say popcorn? Yeah. <laughs> Flavor popcorn. Gave me popcorn. No, I gave you popcorn. Then you're smelling your own hands. <laughs> <laughs> let's not go there. Well, let's not let's not go there. Let's not go there at all. People, yes, it, as you said, it all it all starts with um it all starts with a needs arousal, um because that is where basically this, through the stimulation of one of your senses, you become um aware of something that you didn't even know that you actually, a need that you didn't even have. Now the need arousal immediately then stimulates the drive state. Where the drive state is, the action that you now take based on how the senses have been stimulated. You can ignore them, and then you're a much stronger person than I am, or you can actually Act on it. If you act on it, it is probably because you did have a specific need that you were not aware of that was now aroused, and you want to um, um, you want to satisfy that need, and that is um, what happens during the drive state where we engage in specifically goal-directed behaviors to get us to the point where we satisfy that particular need. What we do know about customers is that customers are always shopping around for best bargains, always. Online or in the shops, doesn't matter. Customers always buy things every day. You're using a service, it could be a cell phone service, it could be that you are um, withdrawing money at the ATM, you're using the financial service, it's actually to your own funds, but still, they provide the service. It could be that um, that you, and we all know, and especially you as millennials, are shopping around for information all the time. You are constantly shopping for information. You want the best information. You want to be the best informed that you can be. Okay? By the way, um, I've started marking on, on, on your test already. I had to wait a couple of days because I couldn't um, start with the marking immediately because... Um, the person who was originally loaded as moderator on, on, on the course was um, has left the company um, a couple of months ago and the new moderator has not been uh, appointed on the system. So that would have meant that if I started marking that, the moderator would have to print the actual um, papers to moderate it. Now it can be done online, now that, the, that um, somebody has been identified and nominated. Okay, just, just to give you a sort of update on where we are with um, with um, and you'll get proper feedback after the long weekend um, if everything has been moderated. And, and we, I'll discuss the paper with you after the weekend anyway, but um, um, I'm not sure exactly when the results are released. Okay. <laughs> right. What's the, next, um, what's the next state that we're going into? We now know and we now realize that we have a need or a problem that we have to resolve. It's not a problem to be hungry. It's a problem if you do not have um, a plan of action to satisfy and to, um, to address that particular problem and to satisfy that particular need. 
That's going to be in my graduation. Yeah. You want to get to the state where your needs are satisfied? We are going to be looking at a few different um, um, uh, classifications, it can be called theories, whatever you want um, to identify um, identify needs and to try and, and, and put it into perspective and try to understand your motivation um, for satisfying certain needs uh, and the order in which you satisfy your needs better. Uh, I think the most common one that we all know is, is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Maslow's hierarchy of needs um, referred to specifically um, and it base, it's based on three things that um, all humans adopt a certain set of motives through generic features and through social interaction. Uh, we also know that some motives are more basic than others and we also know from Maslow's hierarchy that the most basic needs have to be satisfied first before we can advance to another level of need that needs to be satisfied. Okay. All the different needs, um, it's explained to you there on this on, 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 on the slide, but I'm going to advance to the next slide, slide number 13, where we put Maslow's hierarchy um, um, in, in, um, in the form of an illustration. Um, the five different need levels, uh, I think you're all familiar with that. Um, just pay attention to the fact that we know it's physiological safety and um, social esteem and self-actualization. Those are the five levels. The need that is most basic and most important to satisfy is to um, um, is your physiological or basic needs right at the bottom. Um, that has to be satisfied before you can move. And with all these levels, you have to satisfy the needs on each level before you can advance to satisfying the needs in the next level. Nobody's going to um, 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 try and satisfy social needs to belong to a sports club or a social club if they are hungry um, and if they feel um, threatened and, um, and, and, and insecure. So you've got to go through your first two levels of satisfaction before you can get to the third level, which is the social, um, the social level. Remember that social also is called often um, um, belonging. Okay, some people refer to um, the social level as belonging because it's a better description of exactly what um, the third level requires, and that is for you to feel loved and respected and that you actually are um, accepted by other people. Right, anybody, any questions at this, at this particular point? Can I get an indication from Can I get an indication from the group in um, online if you are still battling with your connection? No, sir. Those who are online are not battling. Those who are not online are the ones we actually have to be concerned about. Okay. Um, Thank you very much. Thanks for um, informing us that everything is cool. Um, I will attend to any potential technical problems um, immediately after this class. Um, I'll talk to our IT person and see if um, it was a it was if it was a common problem amongst um, amongst us. Um, how's the weather up in Gauteng? Is no there's no thunderclouds or thunderstorms brewing, so we, that could also sometimes affect the um, believe it or not your your signals. Okay. I think we're all good. If nobody has any questions, um, we can chat again on Thursday. Please, people, we have the function of we have the function of of, of um, reaching the majority of the group through the announcements that we place on Canvas. Please, it's like it's like checking your diary and checking your battery life on your phone every day. Check your announcements every day. Anything that can improve our connectivity and our live sessions, um, stability with internet access and stuff like that, or anything that will change, I will post um, after um, or during the course of the day after I've spoken to our technical person. 
otherwise, um, we can chat again on and continue with chapter eight on on Thursday. Okay. Thanks very much for the session. If there's anybody that wants to ask me anything, you're more than welcome to. Okay.